I tried to fake it as much as I could by trying to enjoy the graduation. However, when it was all over, it hit me like a brick wall. Nothing had changed. I didn't feel any different even though I had just received my diploma and I was officially a doctor in chiropractic. I was hoping to feel something, some type of relief, some type of hope, but nope, nothing. It hit me hard and knocked me down and I wasn't able to get up. After graduation, we didn't have anything special planned. My wife wanted to celebrate and we had every right to. We had just gone through a very arduous journey and made it through to the other side. With my negative internal environment and anxious worry for the future, I just couldn't get myself to enjoy the moment. Instead, the opposite happened. I ruined the situation for everybody. I couldn't find a way to explain to my wife what I was going through, my feeling of an inadequacy, of self-doubt, of anxiety for a future burdened with the pressure of a huge load of debt. This frustrated her and to top it off, I wouldn't spend any money to celebrate because we didn't have any money to celebrate with. So we ended up eating Burger King in the car. I cried of sadness and frustration that night instead of joy as I should have. I can almost feel it as I write this, a very difficult moment, which should have been a beautiful one in our lives together. That's a part of chapter five of my new book, Playing in the Dirt. You might ask, well, why am I talking about such a dark moment in my life in a book about playing in the dirt, about being out in nature, about planting a garden? Well, I know I'm not the only one that has felt inadequate, self-doubt, not good enough, uh, and all the other negative feelings that one can feel that'll bring them down. But when you're going through that, you do feel very alone. Sometimes it can get so heavy that it feels like there's a boulder on top of you that you just can't get out from under. There have been times in my life where all I could do was literally dig down to get out from under the boulder. It started in my mid-twenties when I realized that life could be tough. You can get thrown into the ditch and they'll kick you while you're down. I started to get a lot of negative feedback. The worst part about it is I started to believe it. I started to believe, well, that's who you are. That's where I went wrong. But in those times, what helped me the most was getting a shovel and literally digging down, literally digging in the dirt, literally playing in the dirt. One of the principal ways that playing in the dirt or digging in the dirt helped me so much was it helped me focus on something that was good in the present moment, planting a garden. I was able to forget about the past. I was able to let the anxieties of the futures float away for just a couple of minutes. It was meditation at its best. It was that altered state of consciousness that we all need to be. It was in the zone. Being in the zone means that you're completely focused on one thing and where anything is possible. And the only way anything can be possible is when we're 100% focused on that in the present moment. And playing in the dirt allowed me to do that. The first time I felt the therapeutic and calming effect of the garden was when I was in Palma College of Chiropractic. It was my last year, a very difficult year, in which I had very little time. And at the same time, I had all those negative thoughts in my mind and all those anxieties. It was a very tough year. But while I was at Palmer College of Chiropractic, I was determined to return to my ancestral roots and plant a garden. I say return to my ancestral roots because all of us planted a garden sometime in our past. I'm not saying us personally, but our ancestors. And the majority of us don't even have to go that far back. The majority of us just have to go back to our ancestors from World War II in the Great Victory Gardens. Being a graduate student at Palmer College of Chiropractic didn't mean I have a lot of money. So I didn't spend too much money on my first garden. What I did is that whenever we went on a walk and I'd find wood thrown out, I would ask that person if I could take it and they would usually say yes. I also found two flower pots that were thrown out to the trash. Also, they said yes. My first garden was two flower pots and a planter box that was one foot by four feet long, by one foot deep. That was my first garden that I planted with my son, at that time only three years old, where we planted the seeds in eggshells. And that's where it all started. 
that's where I felt my very first calming and therapeutic effect of gardening. The few minutes it took to water, to contemplate, to eventually pick the fruit of my labor was enough to put me in that altered state of conscious, consciousness where I was enjoying the present moment. Since then, I have tried to plant something every season of the year in every place I've lived, which has been in various states and even different countries. At first, I really didn't understand what it was doing. I didn't fully understand that my negative internal dialogue was so harmful that I was constantly living in my past negative moments and anxious about what the future might bring. But as I studied more and more and learned more and more, I came to realize that the garden put me in that present moment and allowed me to forget about all of that stuff and allowed me to enjoy something good. Another quote from my book. As I have continued to grow and learn about the importance of being in the present moment, I have come across different methods of meditation that I now include in my own lifestyle. I also now take time almost every day to sit and focus on my breath and affirm certain beliefs. I sit and try to be still in mind, body, and spirit. Doing this has also made my gardening experience even more enjoyable and even more therapeutic. One of the different methods of meditation that I have learned about is mindfulness and the importance of gratitude in the medita meditation practice. This is something that, has, that I have included more and more while I garden. And I've noticed that as I am grateful, the garden makes it even more easy to be grateful. It's so easy to be mindful and grateful for the things that you can touch and see and feel. When you can grab a seed and plant it in a fertile soil, it's so easy to be grateful for that. The garden makes mindfulness so much more easier. I want to finish with just one more quote from my new book coming out, Playing in the Dirt. The garden is a perfect place to let everything go and immerse yourself in a healthy environment. An environment where one can slowly but surely change the neuronal pathways from stress and destruction to peace and creation. Using the garden to help see all that there is to be grateful for will help cultivate positive neuronal pathways. As I continue to play in the dirt, I'm not only playing, but I mindfully play. I consciously try to cultivate seeds that will bring forth good fruit and not just let any seed cultivate in my mind, producing weeds. I'm definitely not perfect and I still have hard days, but they are much mild, milder and bearable with my mindful playing in the garden. I not only wake up and start my day with gratitude for, for another day, but the garden reinforces that gratitude as I touch the soil, plant seeds, smell the fresh air, and water the plants. I am so grateful for the small planter box garden I have where I can dig my hands into homemade compost, where I consciously plant each seed and wait for a bright future of harvestable fruit, and at the same time, not worrying if it doesn't happen. I am so grateful for potable water that allows me to water my plants when there isn't enough rain. I am grateful for the rain when it falls. I am grateful for the ability to save seed. I am grateful for the sun that gives life to the plants that I nurture. I am incredibly grateful for the opportunity I have to share this information with you listening. You can get in contact with me at BenPageDC on Instagram, send me an email at BenPageDC at gmail.com or visit my website, PastelsVerdesFarm.com. See you next episode.